Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back with your day of the crypto news and analysis. And today, we're going to be talking about an interesting project that I believe has a lot of potential. And I've been telling you guys a little bit about this here and there, but I haven't done a true video on it. So I think that this project deserves a video of its own, just simply because it is or what I believe an incredible project, especially has a long-term vision behind it as well. And it also could provide you guys with a lot of reward in regards to ROI as well, because we are still at fairly good level. So with that being said, let's just jump into it and let's talk about it. So in the world of crypto, where there is 12,000 crypto assets in this space, it is very hard to find very legitimate assets. Now, how do we find those projects? How do we find these, you know, gems before a lot of people are talking about it, whatever the case may be? Well, it's very, very simple. We always do our own research. We always find projects that are undervalued and we look into it and break it down. So today we are going to be breaking down Zillica or Zill. So this is barely at a $1 billion market cap. I understand that 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 it's not as low gem cap, you know, as most assets that we, we talk about, right? We know a lot of low cap gems in the space that, you know, are under $500 million, but this one hasn't ran like most assets. Right now, $11.78 in circulating supply, which is roughly 56% of its max supply. Total supply out there is about roughly $15 billion. Now, overall, I remember buying this around the three to five cent zone um, back in, it was like November and also December of last year. And look at where we are at still. We are at roughly eight cents. Uh, this is a pretty interesting project. This is more like a smart contract platform. It's also mineable. You could also stake Zill and earn uh, GZill, which is like a governance token. It allows you to pretty much, you know, make decisions on the ecosystem and stuff like that. Uh, it's a very scarce amount as well. I think for like every $1,000 worth of Zill, you actually earn like, I think it's like maybe one, I believe. Um, I have to look into it. But overall, when we're talking about this project, right? You could pretty much get this on major exchanges. I know that I was buying on Uphold back then. You could get it on Binance, Qcoin, all this stuff. Um, but, you know, somebody commented on a video before and they were like, dude, you should talk about Zilliqa more. I think it's an interesting project. And it definitely is, right? Um, I'm going to open up the white paper just to have it open. Maybe we could refer back to it a little bit here and there. But I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about the price chart. So, Obviously, like when I was telling you guys, I was buying at like three to five cents. All right. And that was back here. You know, we were roughly at the bottoming point back in, it was like in December of 2020, right? So I was buying around like three to five cents, which five cents is up here. Uh, a lot of those, you know, major buys were down here before I averaged up a little bit. But overall, it doesn't matter, right? Because those were only three cents below the current price, which is nothing, right? Um, it, we're still nearly at ground floor levels. Uh, it looks like we are finding some major support, you know, down here at around seven, some cents. This goes all the way back and we could actually just, you know, throw a quick candle here. So overall, I think that this is the major line of defense for this asset somewhere around this zone here at about roughly almost eight cents exact. So this is the major support zone. If we lose this, obviously, we will come down and retest a lower low. But I think for what it is worth, these entry points aren't too bad at all. And if we're talking about, you know, the year to date uh, percentage wise, you know, this is not up significantly at all. Um, in fact, right, when we're talking about the year low to the year high, uh, it's roughly about 26 cents almost here. Now, if we actually go over to the chart, okay, and we come back down to the low point, so let's go to the price range, and let's go to let's go to uh, January first, right? <clears throat> so one second. So here we go. This is uh, January first. Let's go to the high. It only ran about two hundred and forty percent, almost two hundred and forty-two percent, right? So overall, when we're talking about the, you know, end of the year, end of the bull run percentage wise, where we could go uh, overall, I think that we could see 50 cents plus. I think that we could also see a dollar and from our current prices, you know, that's a that's a significant level. Uh, we're almost at, you know, the prices that I was buying uh, a little bit of stack at. 
Uh, but when we're talking about, you know, 50 cents, that's roughly almost, you know, a 500% of an increase in price. It's like 500 and almost 7%. If we're talking about a dollar, which again, at a dollar, it's only worth, if we go back, you know, $11.78 billion in, you know, market cap. So that, that would be about a thousand percent of an increase in price from our current levels, which again, I think is possible. I think that we could see that. Uh, overall, you know, this hasn't made too much gains. And also for what it is worth, you know, this project does have a lot behind it. So when we come over to the home page for it, first off, I love their overall design of their website. I think that it's very interesting as well, very clean. But when we come down here, uh, we could see Zillica at first glance. Like I said, uh, this is mineable. This is also similar to Hedera Hashgraph, how they have sharding. Uh, this is also a sharded asset. We do see our, our unique application of sharding allows the blockchain to scale in a linear fashion, which is very interesting. I think that this is also very cool because this also allows you know the needs of the growing ecosystem ecosystem of miners and applications which by the way talking about the ecosystem they do have over 60 project teams from over 20 countries uh, that already contributed to Zillica's ecosystem and when we're talking about this you can actually see the Zill ecosystem for yourself here here are some of the collaborations that they've done uh, some featured collaborations as well dApps that are built on Zillica as well which you could kind of just you know see who's actually built on Zillica which is actually very cool to see I think that this um, is mintable yep this is mintable so mintable is actually a pretty big nft um, app as well which this is pretty cool considering the fact that this is all built on zill and like i said you know when we're talking about some of these projects that are already built on here first off we already see unstoppable domains which is also pretty cool because this is a, a domain um, pretty much nft website as well and again they do have a lot of you know, we, we see the extensions here, dot zill, dot crypto, dot coin, dot wallet, dot Bitcoin, dot X, dot NFT, DAO, and even blockchain, which again, talking about this, this is all hand in hand with a lot of transactional volume. Uh, here's some, you know, applications that you could that support unstoppable domains. Uh, so this is actually very interesting. A lot of the dApps and stuff that are built on here is very interesting to see. And again, when we're talking about these dApps that are built on Zill, you know, these are pretty big dApps. And, you know, when we're talking about the price for Brazil, I think it's very undervalued for what it is, you know, worth. So we do see some integrations. These are all that you could integrate with. These are what you could pretty much, you know, store your Zillica on. Ledger is one of them. I actually stored mine on Ledger and you could still stake from the Ledger Nano as well, which is pretty cool with Moonlet. Now we do see some featured integrations. Uh, Chainlink and also Moonlit are both of those. Um, but that's just some of the ecosystem, uh, which again, is really cool to see. Now we do see uh, you could do uh, dull mining as well. You could pretty much mine Zill and also another asset at the same time, which is really interesting. But we also see non-custodial staking. Again, this is what I was talking about with GZill. You could pretty much earn their governance token. This also allows you to pretty much play a part in the Zillica ecosystem, like I was saying. Uh, now you could store anywhere on wallets like i was saying um, but overall that's just kind of the breakdown of zill uh, i want to get more so into the research and development roadmap so here is the roadmap currently so we do see re research and ideation uh, proposal draft it as well and you can see the progress here you know in, in, in regards to you know the pieces of this uh I guess you could call it a pie, whatever. But we do see proposal under review, approved for implementation, implementation in progress, live on testnet, live on mainnet. Now this is all updated through, uh, updated April 2021. So it hasn't been updated in a little bit of time, but still overall, they are continuously working on this. And this is giving us, you know, pretty much all the updates as well. Uh, and giving us, you know, pretty much an in view on what they are working on overall. Now, also, like I said, uh, you could stake it very easily with uh, Zillion. And again, when we're talking about staking, you could earn that GZIL. And also, just so you guys know, we do see here, uh, by the increase of usage of the platform, an increasing amount of transaction fees in Zill will be burned. That is why when we come over to Zill right now, uh, we, and we do see that the max supply to total supply, a lot of that is burned as well. And uh, that also allows for scarcity with Zill itself, which is very good for long-term view as well. 
Now we do see here, why stake? Uh, basically you earn 6% or more with non-custodial staking returns, which is really interesting. A lot of other projects don't have the, the high you know, APY, but it is also with higher APY, I noticed a lot more projects that like pretty much offer, you know, 300% APY or whatever the case may be. They're very insecure. And when we're talking about that, they are also very risky projects to be holding your money in. So I do like lower APY projects. Uh, 6% is still fairly good, in my opinion. Now, you could stake this on all of these exchanges or on all of these uh you know, pretty much, uh, yeah, exchanges or even wallets. Now, I was using Atomic Wallet to stake my Zill. Uh, I think Atomic Wallet, for what it is, is very, um, you know, secure and also it's trusted. I use this also for, you know, even you could use this for HBAR as well. So, overall, I think Atomic Wallet out of all of these would be the best choice, in my opinion. But again, you know, you do your research, you could stake it wherever you'd like. Um, but overall, I think staking is a very easy way to earn residual income as well as also earn, you know, extra coins for, you know, really not <laughs> doing too much in terms of buying. Now, like I was saying, they do have NFTs. Uh, they actually have, you know, this NFT for Terrence Crawford, who is a boxer, but this is also uh, pretty cool what they are doing here as well. Um, we do see here that greatness is now available for purchase via a blind auction with a starting bid of $250,000. Uh, but overall, they're trying to get into the NFT game. I think the NFT game is still thriving. I think uh, the NFT game will also continue to thrive. Now, they also do have a name team, very transparent team as well, which as you guys already know, I do love transparency. Uh, you could pretty much read about all of these individuals as well, and you could actually contact the ecosystem team, which is really interesting too. Um, and you could read more about all of these individuals and really do your research. But I do think Zill um, is a very interesting coin nonetheless. Now, in regards to the white paper, I really am just interested in, I don't know. So they don't have token economics here, but you guys already know I love token economics, but I know that they don't hold a lot for the team at all. Uh, just from the past uh, experiences with Zill, I know that when I was talking to a few individuals before I actually got into Zill, they were telling me about the project. They were telling me about the tokenomics at that point. Um, but overall, when we're talking about the token economics, most of the tokens that are out in total supply or even in max supply also power the ecosystem but also a lot of those you know tokens like i said are locked in staking to earn gzil uh and again you know going back to gzil it is a scarce token it's a governance token similar to jstack with jigstack um you know you could pretty much you know stake stack and earn jstack but it is more so of a governance token but now when we're going back to all of these projects when we're talking about the dApps, when we're talking about all the projects that are built on the ecosystem and we're talking about staking and we're also talking about that six percent uh burn rate of those tokens making it more scarce uh i think that the long-term view of Zill is more so focused on building out the ecosystem similar to any project that we invest in like even when we're talking about hbar Right. It's more so talking about the entire, you know, main net, who they're going to have building on it. But when we're talking about the price compared to what they are doing, right, we're talking about this, the staking system. We're talking about the ecosystem that they're building out, the NFT projects, the NFT partnerships that they're building out as well. Uh, this is a smart contract uh, platform that are that is trying to solve the main problem with smart contracts entirely. And what is that? That is the scalability factor. And with that sharding aspect, I think that when we're talking about the, the node operators, we're talking about the ecosystem, we're talking about all the individuals building on it, I think the sharding aspect is going to bring a lot more scalability factors to all of these smart contract platforms. Even going back to HBAR, like I was saying, um, I think that that is interesting to see. Now, when we're talking about Zilliqa's overall technology, it's more so of a proof of work consensus, but it is also sort of like a hybrid, if you will. Uh, to really kind of make it work and actually allow for that scalability factor to really kind of be brought in. But when we're talking about the price, when we're looking at this price chart here, you know, we are basically at almost ground floor levels, which I think that this does have a lot of ROI potential in it as well. And for what it is, you know, for what they are doing, you know, they're doing a lot of, 
you know, application offerings in regards to gaming, domain registry services, uh, financial services, all that payment services as well, and advertising and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think that that is very cool to see, right? So when we're talking about the token economics, uh, it, it's basically just a utility token that is being executed for smart contracts to also cover, you know, transactional fees on, you know, the main nets. And also when we're talking about these, you know, this is also earned rewards by, you know, miners, stakers, whatever the case may be. So a lot of what is being held in terms of token economics, going back to uh, the total supply or circulating supply, a lot of those tokens are not in, you know, Zill's, the, the Zill team's wallets or anything like that like most of if not all of the circulating supply that's out there already is being held by holders it's being held by stakers miners whatever the case may be right so overall the supply the tokenomics everything looks fairly good in that aspect uh the utility behind this token is very strong and as you guys already know i i am one of those individuals that love utility grade tokens and zilliqa for what it is is very interesting um, at these current prices. I mean, we're talking about eight cents to twenty-six cents. That that's an incredible ROI still, uh, even at just you know the current levels. So when we're talking about this, once it does hit twenty-six cents, breaks over this line up here and goes into price discovery yet again, I think that we could see the highs of you know fifty cents plus and like I said, you know a dollar plus at some point in time. Um, and at the current prices, I still think that that is fairly undervalued for what they are building. A lot of dApps that are already built on Zilliqa are doing incredible things like Mintable. As you guys already know, Mintable is huge in the NFT game. I know that they're not as big as OpenSea or Rarible, but they are also still in the NFT game doing incredible things. And we also see domain registry, like I was saying, that's huge as well. So overall, I think Zill is a very undervalued gem. I am still holding it and I'm only in profit about like three to four or five cents over what my buys were. I'm um, going all the way back to three cents to even five cents. So, you know, it hasn't moved too much, but as you guys know, I'm an investor. I invest in things. These are long-term investments. So. I think that this is a great smart contract platform. I think that what's being built on Zilliqa has a lot of promise and potential. And the tokenomics look fairly solid for what they are doing in regards to building this ecosystem out to be a very high grade ecosystem in regards to a utility ecosystem. So with that being said, I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on. If you guys want more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.